God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. We are in your presence. Lord, have your way. We pray that let the Holy Spirit lead us. We refuse every spirit of confusion. We pray that, Lord, may you go with us. Without you, we are nothing. We acknowledge your presence, and we ask you that, God, may you teach us today. God, may you reveal to us that which you want us to hear. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. And good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for welcoming me again. For those who don't know me, my name is Kazungu Duncan. Uh, I'm a third year in Chiromo, Bachelor of Science in Metrology. And I bless the Lord. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. Uh, before I begin, I don't know, I had, you uh, call me Katie, but I don't know if I left their phone. Did you get your phone there? I've misplaced my phone, a tablet, so I thought in my chapel, but come on, you only need Otherwise, the Lord is faithful, he is good, and uh, Today, uh, Christianity has been derailed. I mean, we see the countries that came as missionaries. They taught the word. They started the gospel. We see them uh, now worshipping the devil. Christianity, I mean, is at war. The enemy is trying to fight Christianity. Praise God. And I was given this topic, Christianity and morality, to talk about. And in the ministry of Jesus Christ, he shows how a Christian should live and how Christianity should be taken. Remember when he comes, he says, that I have come not to demolish the law that was given by Moses, but just to support it and strengthen it. So then the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, the way John 1.17 says. So Jesus is coming into the world. He was there before, but now he is being manifested from the spirit into flesh. And he now appears into the world as human. He lives like a normal human and he eats like a normal human so that he may bring the kingdom of God unto us. Remember, God needed that he brings his kingdom to us. And that's why when the disciples asked Jesus that how should we pray, he told them, in the prayer of the Lord in Matthew 6, he says that let thy kingdom come. I think it's in verse 9 or 10 of chapter 6. That the kingdom of God may come on earth. And he says, let your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. So his intention was that the kingdom of God come to the earth. The heaven come to the earth. So Jesus Christ in his ministry here on earth, he demonstrated Christianity. And Christianity is not a set of laws that one has to follow, failure to which he or she should be condemned. No. Some may say that Christianity has put some, some qualifications or some laws that you have to follow, and, I mean, failure to which you are condemned. Remember the story of the adult, adulterous woman, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes took her and brought her before Jesus, and they said, Rabbi, this lady, this woman has been found in adultery. What should we do? The law of Moses says we should stone her to death. But Jesus did not condemn her. 
He said, whoever has not done any sin, let him be the first one to throw a stone. And no one could even attempt to do that. And Jesus asked her that, now where are your persecutors? Where are your, the people who are condemning you? And he said, there is none. And, and he gave her a warning that, go ye and sin no more. And in Romans 8, as it starts, verse 1 says, that those who are in Christ, they are not condemned. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Praise God. So Christianity is not a set of laws that one has to follow, failure to which, I mean, he should be condemned. Jesus himself never condemned the sinners. He sat with them and he taught them the way. So that is how we should take Christianity. Christianity is not a threat. Jesus Christ uh, never forced anybody into Christianity. And he gave us that freedom as men, as human, to choose. One chooses to be a Christian. So Christianity is not a threat to humanity. Rather, it is that you are given that freedom to choose where to be. And it is the best decision to make for you to be a Christian. So you have that freedom to choose. But blessed is he who chooses to be in Christianity and not any other place. It is the rightful place to be. And Christianity is not an escape for you uh, to be counted in heaven. Some people may say that I want to be a Christian, maybe in my latter days, that when I die, I have a place in heaven. Yes, before Jesus went, he said, I am going to prepare a place for you. But the reason of you choosing Christianity should not be that I am escaping hell to go to heaven. If you have that mentality, then that is wrong. Christianity is more about that. I don't say that there is no heaven. There is heaven. But the idea of that, I'm joining just because I need to go to heaven or to be counted to go to heaven is wrong. There are other things that you have to do for you to be counted one worthy to be uh, in heaven. So when you join Christianity, you should not be selfish and only be thinking of you going to heaven all alone. That's why I'm saying you should also be able to bring others unto Christ so that you may go with them to heaven. You should not be selfish that I'm joining Christianity for me just to gain heaven alone. No. In fact, the teacher says, that is Solomon, that wise is he who wins souls to God, to the kingdom of God. So if you're wise enough and you are a Christian, a true Christian, then you should be aiming at bringing others so that you go with them to heaven. And that reminds me, six years ago, that is in 2012, I wrote this, some of these notes in 2012. And, and, and it reminds me that the word of God is new every moment. I wrote it when I was in Form 1, but I can see it is valid right now when I'm in the university. So the word of God will remain. We share this, I mean, no, Christianity is more of fellowship, so that we also bring others who are sinners. And Jesus said that I have come to the earth not because of the righteous. I have come because of the sinners, those whom we neglect as Christians, those whom we do not want to fellowship with. That is what Jesus came for. That person you see that is not worthy, that is whom Jesus came for. So, Christianity is not selfish gain that you want to go to heaven. Instead, it is that you bring others in the journey to heaven. True Christianity 
is thinking about acts of kindness, love, charity, generosity, and all that. So, and I think James tries to say this when he describes a true religion. I think it's in James 1.27. He says that true religion is that which you have to visit the orphans and the widows. So, if you go aside that, if you neglect the orphans, if you neglect charity, if you neglect love, then that is not Christianity. Christianity is you thinking about the acts of kindness, the acts of love and, and charity and peace, the unity and such things. Christianity is a reality. Let no one say that it is something that is abstract. No. Christianity is a reality. And whatever was spoken in the Bible came to pass. And if it has not come to pass, it shall come to pass. So the word of God is a reality. Christianity is a reality. Remember the words of John the Baptist? And we shall read these scriptures in Luke chapter 3. John the Baptist had a ministry where he taught the word of God and he convicted many to come unto uh, the understanding of the gospel and he baptized them in the waters. So John he remembered the words that Isaiah says when he was there. So that means that the word of God is real. Remember Isaiah talked about it many years, many decades ago. But now John the Baptist come, comes to now, I mean, bring it into reality. We read in verse 4, that is Luke chapter 3, verse 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Esaias, I mean, this King James Version used Esaias, which is Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the, the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So, the prophet talked about this many years ago. And he says, there is a voice in the wilderness that is crying, prepare the way for the Lord, for his coming is near. So, we see these words have now come to pass at this very point. Christianity is a reality. You can also read in John chapter 1 verse 23. It still talks about the same. When, this, the, when the prophet talked about uh, the coming of Jesus Christ. Christianity is an assurance. We are sure of whom we are worshipping. We are not worshipping out of just nowhere. No. Christianity is an assurance. And everything and every passages that are in the Bible are a reality. The places that are in the Bible are there up to present. It's only that names have changed. But the places that Jesus Christ visited and the places that these things happen are real there. So Christianity is an assurance. Unlike other religions, Christians live with a hope that one day Jesus Christ will come back. And that is true. Jesus Christ will come back someday, sometime. That is the hope we have. And I remember talking here about the Trinity of God. That we believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And that he is going to come back to the earth to pick his own people. Because he promised us before ascending to heaven. So the reason why we say that we are living because of hope and faith in Jesus, it is because he promised. And what he promised, we believe that it is coming to pass. Maybe in a billion years. But the truth is, Jesus Christ will come back one day, one time. And when God speaks, 
it is 100% sure that what he speaks is what is going to happen. And I remembered the passage that I read in Zechariah. God talks to him. Remember, the Babylon, the Babylonians have destroyed the Israelites. They have killed most of them and they have sent most of them into exile. And they have destroyed the temple of the Lord. So Israel is in desolate. People have every reason to give up. And God raises Zechariah and he tells him some good words. And he says that it is not by power nor by might but my by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So he encourages him. And my key point is in verse 9 of chapter 4 of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9. And he says that now Zerubbabel started to build the temple. The foundation he laid, he is going to finish it. And that is an assurance. God talks to Zechariah, and he tells him that the foundation that was laid by, by Zerubbabel, he is going to finish it because he started it and that is the promise or the plan of God at that time. God did not bring blessing at that time because the temple was desolate and there was no one to rebuild the temple. But now Zerubbabel is now laying a foundation. And in the previous verses, he says that because it is by the Spirit of the Lord, these mountains that you see right now, they will be leveled. So every mountain that stood against Zerubbabel is going to be leveled. And I'm saying that Christianity is an assurance. And if you read afterwards, we see Haggai coming in. If you read Haggai, Haggai and Zechariah lived almost the same time. The theologians say that the book of Zechariah and the book of Haggai were written, it has a difference of about one month. So there are, there are prophets who existed during the same time. And this is revealed afterwards. Even if it took time, God still revealed himself through the word that he spoke to Zechariah. So, ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is an assurance. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And I remember Peter saying this. He said that the stone that was refused by the builders has now become the chief cornerstone. So Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christianity. And if you find any other person teaching away from Jesus Christ as the foundation of uh, Christianity, then that is not Christianity. Christianity is all about Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone, as the chief pillar. So we accept him as our personal savior and he reveals himself into Christianity. So Christianity is not there without uh, Christ Jesus. Paul talks the same in Philippians chapter 5, I mean chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. And there we see that all authority and power has been given unto Jesus. And he says, maybe in verse 11, verse 10 and verse 11, he says, and at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He says, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And in verse 11, he says, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So all authority and all power has been given to Jesus Christ. He is the foundation of Christianity. So in Christianity, we require faith. And the unknown author of Hebrews, he says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, that faith is the evidence of things that you've not seen. Is that Hope. You are hoping for it. So if we have that faith that <clears throat> Jesus will come someday, that proves that Christianity is based on faith and belief. 
so we should have faith uh, and without faith we cannot we cannot please god we only please god once we have uh, faith in his word we should not even we should we should hope for what we do not even see right now christianity teaches us the way to live this is most important that christians have to live a very peculiar life there are places that christians should not go there are things that christians should not do so christianity teaches us how to live and it is the best doctrine that we have to receive so after talking about christianity let's now see morality morality is when we say that this act is good or is better than this and i'll only talk about the positive part of it that in christianity there are some morals that we have to, to have as christians and i've said that christianity teaches us how to live so it imputes in us a certain behavior after you receive jesus christ in your heart he gives you certain behaviors so these are what we, we are now we want to talk about morality when we say that this behavior is better than this so morality they are the behaviors the morality is all about what should we do and if we read in chapter 3 of uh, of uh, Luke Luke chapter 3 we'll see after John the Baptist is teaching and there came people now asking what should we do so morality is all about what should we do in verse 10 and the people asked him saying what should we do then they are asking john the baptist so christianity i mean morality is all about what should we do in verse 12 then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him master what should we do so we see also the tax collectors are coming and they are asking him what should we do verse 14 and the soldiers likewise demanded of him saying and what shall we do what shall we do so morality is about what should we do they are the acts that a christian uh, should do so john the baptist tries to answer some of these questions in a very wise way if you read there maybe in verse 10 after the people are asking him what should we do in verse 11 he answered and said unto them he that has two coats let him impart to him that has none and he that has meat let him do likewise so he's encouraging sharing that's why i said christianity is not about selfishness so john the baptist said if you see your brother your sister your neighbor has nothing to eat and yet you have meat you have to share and he has nothing to put on then let him help him what you have you know you cannot tell someone that be warm when you have not given him what to wear so he says he who has two coats let him give one to his neighbor let's see what he answers to the tax collectors he says in verse 13 and he said unto them exact no more than that which is appointed you so he says you are collecting tax do not take more than you are expected to take let's see what he says to the soldiers verse 14 part b do violence to no man neither accuse any falsely and be content with your wages so he teaches them the way to lead these are people 
who were respected by then, by that time. So he tells them how to lead the others, not to, to condemn the others and not to press the others down. Instead, they should be in a position to lead them in the rightful way. And that is how Christians, we should live. So from John the Baptist, morality, and that is the good part of it, is shown. He understood that though his ministry came before Jesus, the ministry of Jesus Christ was greater than his. So John the Baptist never took credit for what he was doing. He acknowledged that his ministry came before Jesus. But then he understood that Jesus Christ's ministry was stronger, was greater than his. You can read that in chapter 1 of John and verse 27. John chapter 1 verse 27. He says, He, it is who coming after me, is, pref I mean, is preferred before me, whose shoes lash it, I am not worthy to unloose. So he says, though his ministry came first, he is not worthy to even untie the laces of his shoes. That is of Jesus Christ. In verse 30, he says, this is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So he acknowledges the fact that Jesus Christ existed before him. So morality teaches us not to take credit for what is not ours. And John the Baptist knew this. He was asked uh, if he was the Messiah and if he was Isaiah and, and Elijah, but he did not uh, lie to them. He had the opportunity to say he is the Messiah, and people could believe him. But because he understood his cause, he understood his morals, he told them the truth that he is not a Messiah, he is not the Elijah, he is not the prophet that was promised. Instead, there is someone who is coming, who is greater than him. So John never took credit. And you can read that in John chapter 1 from verse 19 through 23. They were asking him, are you the Messiah? Are you uh, the prophet? Are you Elijah? But he told them, I am not. Instead, there is one who is coming who is greater than me. So morality teaches us that we should not take credit for what we have not worked for. So morality should teach us the acts of honesty, kindness, generosity, love, patience, and so on. The same with Christianity. So these two things work together. Morality should bring us close to God. We should impact the kingdom of God through our behaviors. You know, people will view us and see what we do and admire to be a, a Christian just the way or through your lifestyle someone else will feel it is right to be a christian we should embrace uh, morality it should uh, not be a barrier to those who are not uh, uh, christian so that we fellowship we share the way john the baptist says and we bring many into christianity we should not just be self-centered. Uh, uh, and it should also teach us to accept corrections, whatever what. John the Baptist refers to the people as a generation of vipers. He does not fear to tell them that they are, they are snakes, a generation of snakes. But then, these people uh, received the word. Yes, they were called vipers, but they did not look at whatever he was saying because it was true. They accepted the corrections and they accepted to be baptized. So morality should teach us to accept corrections. Uh, 
uh, that is in Luke chapter 3, verse 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath, of, from the wrath to come? So he called them vipers, but they accepted the correction. They say, he says, who has warned you to run away from the wrath that is coming? But they accepted and got baptized. So morality should teach us to uh, accept uh, corrections, whatever you want. In conclusion, Christianity and morality go hand in hand. Uh, failure to have one, one becomes incomplete. You can't, you can't say you are not, you are a Christian, and and you do not love your brother, you don't love your sister, you don't love your neighbor, uh, and maybe the acts of kindness and charity. So these things go hand in hand. One should drive you to do the other. So Christianity should teach you morality, and through morality. People should see how you live and admire to be a Christian. And Jesus says we should be as examples. And Paul writes also to Timothy, says, lead them, be an example. So that is what is expected of us. We should embrace uh, uh, diversity, but at the same time view what we offer uh, to God, I mean, in all aspects. We are diverse. All of us are different. And all of us have different personalities. We should accept that. But through that, we should also communicate uh, uh, to God and, and, and serve God in all aspects. Everything you do uh, should be aiming at glorifying God. And Paul addressed this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. He says, whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly, knowing that you are doing to God and not to man. So, whatever you do, in everything you do, you should be aiming at glorifying uh, God. And also, we should, you know, we are like the salt and the light to the world. And Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 5 after telling the Beatitudes, he now comes in verse 13 and he says, we are the salt to the world as Christians. And that is Christianism. But he asked a question, what if that salt loses its saltiness? It has nothing to do. So he says it should be thrown out and be trade on by the people. Praise God. So Christianity is that we are sent as souls to the world and we should impact people as salt. And in normal circumstances, most people can take food, I mean, maybe uh, tea without sugar. But it is hard for someone to take maybe I mean, vegetables without salt. So it shows how important salt is. And in science, class 6 or class 4, you talked about ways of preserving uh, food. And salting was one of them. So salt is also a preservative. And it adds flavor. So we are sent as salt. I said that is in Matthew chapter 5. And what I like is in verse 16, of course in verse 14 he talks of we are a city on a hill which cannot be hidden. And verse 15 he says we are the light to the world. I mean, those are very sweet words to, to say. We are the light to the world. And he says when one lights a candle, he does not put it under a bowl. Instead, he puts it in the open so that it can shine its light. And in verse 16 he says, Now go ye and shine your light to all men. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works. So we see light representing Christianity. And good works representing morality. So he says, let your Christianity, let your light be shown unto the people. And your morality, the positive part of it, the good works. He says, and let the good works uh, be seen. So it's not that you do, I mean, to yourself. Do it also to people, to other people. And I was reading somewhere you were saying that whatever I teach you, I think Jesus was talking to his disciples, that what I tell you in the dark, you go and tell it in the light. So he teaches us that what he teaches us at a personal level, we should be able to spread it and share with the others. So he says, and let that uh, they may see your good works, and what and do what and glorify your father which is in heaven so he acknowledges the point that i said that we should not take credit of what we do not own so he says after you've shown christianity and you've shown your morality so he says let all the glory be unto god the father who is in heaven so christianity and morality is shown by the life of Jesus Christ on the earth, and it teaches us to live a straight light, I mean straight life, and impact people. And people will be motivated but by what we do, by what we speak. Words have a lot of meaning sometimes. So I, it is my prayer that God will still teach us more on this, because Christianity, some, some, some places, if you say you're Christian, I mean, people will look down upon you. I mean, they will say all kind of, kinds of things. And I was sharing with a friend of mine that was asking her, will you be in, in the church today? That is, it was yesterday, so I was asking if she'd come today. And she was like, I'm, I'm going, maybe, I mean, I'm going at home to see maybe my people and i was like i mean why is it that all the time you're going home on weekends and, and it's been long since i saw you in the service and uh, she answered me and told me that uh, it's not a must i go to church i can sit in my room and watch uh, clips on youtube and read a verse and get blessed. I told her you are right. It is true. You can do that. But is that what Christianity teaches us? Christianity is all about fellowship. And in fact, in one of the Psalms, God says, where there is unity, God commands a blessing. So it is not unity of you and you yourself. It is unity between you and the other. Yes, you can sit in your room and watch the clips and watch the motivational speeches and read the verse and it blesses you so much. But then you forget the fellowship of brethren, the coming together of brethren to share this word. If you forget that, then that is not true Christianity. Look at the lives of the apostles. After Jesus Christ ascends to heaven, Bible records that they used to go in one accord into an upper room to pray. And this is all about fellowship. And we see different writers acknowledging the fellowship of brethren. And even Jesus himself said, where two or three are, there I am. Not, in fact, he says, where two or three are because of my word, there I am. So let us embrace uh, Christianity and morality and Christianity is all about us sharing together. Do not sit in your room. Uh, do not uh, say that I'll, I'll watch clips. It is true you will watch but let us come here. Encourage the others who are not here. We have first years who are coming. Let us encourage them that fellowship is most important.
it is not that you just come and walk away through fellowship you, you create friends who are going to last uh, until maybe you vacate this earth but all in all we are commanded as Christians to stay in peace in unity and in fellowship may we rise as I pray Father, you are so great. We worship you and we bless you. The way your word says in Psalm 96. The Lord, we should worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Lord, we, we acknowledge you and, and, and we accept that you are our personal savior. We've learned and you've taught us about Christianity and morality. And we pray that God let us not just be uh, loving you from our lips and speaking about you from our lips, but let it come from a deeper part of our hearts. We pray that, Lord, may you help us to understand your word and God to embrace this fellowship and, and togetherness and sharing of your word. And God, I know that your word says that wherever we are in peace, you will command a blessing. And we pray the Lord as we share the good news and, and, and the gospel to other people. Lord, help us that we may bring many to your kingdom. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. Thank you for everyone who is here. We pray that, Lord, lead us in the path of righteousness and may you show us your ways, our oh God. We love you and we bless you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.